Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore. A new documentary called American Autumn, an Ocu Doc, essentially invites people to join the Occupy movement. Here's a little clip from the film. There is something more important than the richest people becoming richer when we have the highest rate of childhood poverty in the industrialized world. When is enough enough? You know that scene from the Oliver Stone film Wall Street when Gordon Gecko, played by Michael Douglas in a role that would win him an Oscar, appears at a shareholders meeting of a company, Teldar Paper, to defend his actions and his grotesque worldview and delivers the now famous speech where he says, Greed for lack of a better word, is good. Greed is right. Greed works. Greed clarifies, cuts through, and captures the essence of the evolutionary spirit. Now joining us to talk about his film from Groton, Massachusetts, is Dennis Trainer Jr. He's currently the host of a web series, Acronym TV. He's been writing and producing editorial video commentary since 2007, published over 800 of these short videos, many of which have gone viral on YouTube. He was an advisor, a media advisor for the Kucinich campaign, and he's the writer, producer, and director of this newly released documentary, American Autumn and Occuduck. Thanks for joining us, Dennis. Thanks for having me, Paul. So, Dennis, just give us a little uh, outline of the film, what you hope to accomplish with it. Well, I hope to entertain people and answer the question, why Occupy? I'm looking at the Occupy movement not as a series of single issues, but, say, uh, people interested in single payer, as seeing people interested in the anti-war movement, or as people interested in anti-austerity measures c can choose to fight alone, or they can choose to get under the big banner of Occupy and push that fight up the hill together. Um, so that the single, but the single issues working alone, standing alone, uh, people on the far left have been working and mostly failing uh, to to demonstrate any successful victories in the, in the in the for the past several generations. So, in my opinion, Occupy, and I think Occupy is still a baby, and the future of it is yet to be written, uh, is the best chance that we have of getting our country back and moving the center back left. One of the ideas in the film, I think, that comes out very strongly is there needs to be a counter narrative to the pre presidential elections in this next coming period. And, and while I understand that, that the idea that whether one section or the, or the other of the elite gets to rule can't be the only choice for people, um, there, do you not think there needs to be some kind of engagement, uh, some form of electoral strategy for this movement? And I say some form of electoral strategy, because at, at the end, if you don't have one, at best, you are trying to in, just ask for an influence the, the, the current parties, whichever one's in power, to do something, which, which one of the voices in your film says people should stop doing. There's a big strain within the movement, a uh, big thread within the movement of people saying we should not be asking this system uh, for anything. We shouldn't be asking them for permission. We shouldn't be asking them to improve our lives. We should instead create our, our own world. Now, that's a, that's, that's a big dream, and I don't see that happening in the short term. But Bill Moyer of the Backbone Campaign speaks very eloquently about this. Some of us knew better that you can't, there's no Messiah going to get elected by this system and deliver hope and change we can believe in. So how will the Occupy movement that has wisely stayed away from promoting political parties or individual politicians navigate the minefield of the potentially co-opting force that is the presidential election cycle? So voting, yes, people should go and vote their conscience, or they should vote tactically, they should do what they will. I don't think that this movement has, should be wasting too much time or energy on the electoral process. You saw big fights within the movement happening about in the, in the, in the wake of the Madison, Wisconsin uh, failed recall effort of Scott Walker. Uh, and people splitting hairs over strategy and should we, should we back Democrats who are only slightly better than Scott Walker, the Democrat that was put up against Scott Walker there was just almost as anti-union as Walker himself. So should we be, is it true to say Obama is a more attractive presidential candidate, a little more? Yes, than Mitt Romney, of course. Am I going to personally waste much time working or campaigning for the Obama administration? No, of course not. And what about some of the alternative parties that espouse many of the ideas that you see in the Occupy movement, whether it's the uh, Rocky Anderson candidacy with the Justice Party or Jill Stein with the Green Party? Uh, what, what's your attitude towards that? 
I think that the Green Party has been working towards a lot of the things that most people within the Occupy movement who are new, very young and newly awakened to the movement, that the Green Party has been working towards those for decades. Unsuccessfully, part of that could be some organizational problems within the Green Party, but a bigger part of it, as Ralph Nader has pointed out on Real News over and time and time again, is the exclusion from any other uh, candidates from the conversation. So I think that, you know, for people who live in states that Obama's going to carry, if you're really worried about that, if you can't find it within you to vote your conscience and find a candidate that you are attracted to, then you can vote tactically and give your vote to Jill Stein. Now, maybe the Green Party and Jill Stein and Sherry Honkala can get a little bit more of a slice of the conversation if they get two or three or four percent. This is a tactical vote. And for me, that's how I approach the election. But I don't think people should take electoral advice from me. I've never voted for a winner. Now, now, in, in a longer term way, and this isn't going to happen this this round, and, 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 and it's hard to say how many years it would take. But there is, seems to be, in my view, a kind of false dichotomy. There's either movement or there's electoral process. And, and, and one would think, I would think, if you look at places like even like Egypt, where you had a massive movement, but very little for uh, parties uh, ready to take uh, participate in the electoral process except Muslim Brotherhood. Mm -hmm. And so you wound up having this mass, uh, it's hard to imagine a bigger mass movement than what, what happened in Cairo and across right. Egypt, but completely unable to take advantage of the electoral process. Uh, I mean, what I'm asking is, doesn't there need to be both, not one or the other? You know, I, th I think that's very possible, and one of the things that I try to present in the movie is that I don't, I don't try to present myself as a policy wonk or a talking head that would normally be on a show like yours. I'm a regular guy who lives on a main street in a small New England town, who looks at the world, kind of honestly, and thinks that it's completely screwed up. I mentioned at the beginning that this movie is an invitation for you to join the Occupy movement. But there are no membership dues, no papers to sign. All that is required is the willingness to see the world as it is and decide that you are going to be part of the solution. Occupy is less of an organization and more of an organism, a living, breathing, multi-tentacled force that refuses to find a niche or be pushed into a corner. This organism is still a baby, and the narrative it will be telling in the years to come is yours to write. Greed is a homicidal force in our culture, and that we need a cultural shift. And someday, if we can shift the culture, then perhaps we can shift the body of government that governs for, of, and by the, that, that culture. Right now, to say that we have a government of, for, and by the people is a cruel joke. You know, Citizens United may have been the last nail in the coffin, uh, but the giveaway and the, the corporate takeover of our government's been long, a, lo a process that's been going on for a long time. Well, uh, yeah, I do want to take up this concept of greed as the problem. You know, in, in your film, you have, as we showed in the clip, uh, you, you, you talk about Gordon Gekko's uh, piece of a gore, greed is good in the Oliver Stone film, Wall Street. Mm -hmm. and, and there was a mass movement against greed, and, and it had a great effect, and that's called early Christianity. And uh, it, it eventually got assimilated by the state. And, 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 and part of the issue is, I think, that is, is there's too much emphasis on the idea of, like, the idea, the morality, rather than, you know, how the fundamentals of the system and the most fundamental thing about the system, how stuff is owned. I mean, I don't know how many ordinary people, if they were given controlling uh, shares or even just a big stake of Goldman Sachs, you know, wouldn't all of a sudden discover greed is good in the sense that it's it's sort of inherent in the fact that if you own the commanding heights of the economy and corporations are about making maximum profit, not modest profits, not reasonable profits, you know, that is the essence of, of a corporation to make maximum profits. Then why why is it about greed? Why isn't it about who owns it? And, and then the issue of public ownership obviously emerges. Well, I do think it is a moral issue that I hope that the Occupy movement can awaken something in the culture that sees a shift in that. And like you said, you know, in the past year, we can now talk about capitalism as not, you know, something that's the be all and the end all. We can question it uh, without being painted red and painted into a corner. So in certain, in, in the infancy of the movement, we've accomplished that, opened up the door for people to think about a new way. Uh, a new system that should govern the way they go about their, their lives. Okay, well, there'll be a link to uh, Dennis's film underneath the player here if you want to take a look. Thanks very much for joining us, Dennis. Thank you, Paul. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.